if you guys have one of these older sleds like this 96 MXZ 670 that I run, um, you probably run into issues about getting 12 volt electronics on it. These older sleds and even some of the newer stuff is all AC voltage, so it is 12 volts, but it's AC. Now in this case, I don't have electric start. Um, on this sled, I do have a key, but it doesn't do anything other than allow you to turn the ignition on or off. If you did have a sled with electric start, that means you'd have a 12 volt battery on it and wiring up these things to 12 volts DC is no problem. When we're putting out 12 volts AC off the motor, unfortunately, our electronics aren't going to run off of that. I'm going to show you on this sled how I wired this guy up so we can use it. Now the one place on these sleds that is 12 volts DC is actually your reverse buzzer here. You can see we have a red positive, black negative, whereas coming in, it's kind of hard to see because it's zip tied up, but we've got uh, two yellow wires which would indicate AC voltage, so it is converted to DC here. You can try and tap into this, as you can see I already did, but that didn't work too well. Um, it's probably okay to do this for a heated visor, but definitely not for electronics. So what I'm gonna end up doing on this sled is putting in a battery. So I've got a 12 volt gel cell battery. This is a seven amp hour one. You can get nine amp hour ones. Um, you can get 14 amp hour ones, which are a little bit bigger, but the same uh, distance there. This five inch Lowrance unit, which I'm really just gonna be using for GPS when I go out ice fishing, it'll be you know no problem all day on a battery like this. Now, I do use this sled uh, as well, has a dual purpose where it does tow my ice hut out, but I also like to uh, just go out, rip around on it. So I don't wanna add any extra weight. That's gonna add about five pounds. So what I'm gonna do is make it removable. So in order to do this, first thing we're gonna do is remove that air box there, just so we can gain some access to the back end of the gas tank. You're just gonna go ahead and undo this rubber strap. Just make sure it's free of all the gas lines. Tilt the air box forward. And then you can just set that aside. Now under here, this wire here goes to your tail light, okay? So there's a groove under your gas tank to run that wire. We're gonna use that exact same groove to run our 12 volt wire, which I've already fished through here. And then I've connected it up to the power cord for my Lowrance unit. So you can start to just push that wire back through. And then what you'll do is you'll take your seat off. You can usually just push them back and lift up. Okay, so you can see that connector there, which is going to the tail light and then my red and black wire, which is gonna run back up under the seat. And it'll go into our trunk compartment here. And then I've just put two connectors that will go right to the battery. So the beauty of this system is, if I'm not gonna use it, I can just take the battery out and save myself five pounds. So I did leave myself a lot of extra slack in this cable just so I can connect the battery out here rather than down in the compartment. Just go ahead and stuff that guy down in there. I always carry a toe strap with me. What that will also do in this case is, I know you probably can't see, but I'm just putting it in between the battery just so that battery is nice and stable in there. It's not gonna be riding all around. Now that is a sealed lead acid battery, so I got nothing to worry about for spilling. And there we go. Now we've got a 12 volt GPS unit powered up on a 12 volt AC snowmobile. And what you can do under here is just zip tie this all together just to keep it nice and neat. And again, leaving a little extra slack here. You never know when you're gonna need a little bit extra if you decide to change things up a little bit. So final thing is you're just gonna go ahead, reinstall your air box. Make sure everything is seated correctly in there. Hook up your elastic retainer strap. So hopefully that video helped you out. If you're running one of these AC sleds, this is probably the easiest way to get some 12 volt DC electronics powered up on it.